It's been more than a year since we sent everybody home from our Twitch studios. But you know, our hosts are very inventive. We're going to take a look at how Aunt Pruitt and Micah Sargent have turned their home offices into home studios on this hands-on technology. This is Twit. Hey folks, Micah Sargent here. Welcome to Hands On Tech. Uh, we are talking about the way we've set up our desks, the sort of uh, final adjustments and and uh, products and devices and and coffee cups we've settled on after all this time working from home. So let's take a look. Uh, for me, I went through several iterations of of setups. I tried different uh, cameras, different. Uh, microphone interfaces, different microphones, different cables, different cords. I've tried a lot of stuff and I sort of finally found my way to what worked for me and what worked consistently. And that ended up being the most important thing, what was going to work consistently for me. And so you might be surprised to learn that even though I have uh, cameras that are super high quality and offer lots of bouquet in the background and all that kind of thing, I settled on the Logitech C920 as my camera of choice for uh, calling in for Twit shows. Uh, I, as I said, tried different ones. And it, the setups are so finicky. And if you have good lighting, the Logitech C920 has a beautiful picture that works quite well. Um, I, same with, with uh, microphones, tried different microphones. Um, and in fact, the one that I use uh, personally, the Shure Beta 87A is a fantastic microphone. And I would be using it uh, if it wasn't for the fact that we kind of wanted a consistent sound across the network. And so we've got the Heil PR40 here as the microphone that you'll see all of our in-house hosts using as their main microphone. Uh, personally, love my Shure Beta 87A and will be returning to it uh, upon the uh, return to the office. But um, I set things up so that I could kind of show you around uh, at my desk so that I could uh, talk about the different products that I have set up here. As for lights back there, uh, I have a LifeX light strip that runs across the backside of my desk. And so that can uh, change color and, you know, I can have it set to one color if I want to, multiple colors and animate through. That's one of the beautiful things about the LifeX light strip in particular is there are multiple zones of colors that are addressable. As for the lights uh, that are also there, I have two Philips Hue Go um, lights. And these are portable, movable lights that you can actually charge and then take with you. Uh, and they have some certain level of water and dust resistance. So uh, those together combine to make up the kind of lighting accents that I have there. And then as far as uh, my actual lampshade here, inside is a nano leaf light bulb. So that is also addressable via uh, HomeKit. I can, you know, make adjustments to that as I need to um, and, you know, change it if, if I see fit. So let's talk about what's going on on my desk. And I've set up a camera here uh, to help us out with this process. So let's switch over to that. All right. Um, so first and foremost, I want to talk about my cable situation. It looks a little messy right now, but that's because I really wanted to show off these different cables. Um, I am currently using a different cable uh, to plug in this iPhone right now so that I can give you this tour. But the uh, cable that I typically use to plug in my iPhone uh, when I am using it for a camera or when I am doing other things is this Anchor braided cable, this nylon cable from Anchor. It's USB-C on one side and lightning on the other. And it is one of my favorite cables I've ever purchased. It's incredibly resilient. It Look at the length. It's incredibly long and it is fast with that USB-C connection. Um, and so it's charging and also controlling uh, everything that I need it to with the camera. Speaking of controlling with the camera, I should mention uh, an app that I use, and we'll move up here onto the screen. Uh, this is the Reincubate Camo Studio app, or better known as the Camo Studio app. This app lets you use your iPhone's camera as a webcam. And what's super cool is it has different options for the lens that you use. So I can switch between all three lenses on the back of my iPhone, the wide angle lens, the telephoto lens, which gets nice and up close, and you can see that repeating now, and the ultra-wide lens, 
Ta-da, so you can see even more, or I'll go ahead and switch it around and you can see selfie mode. Hello, how are you? Uh, so we'll switch that back and you can see again, uh, I've put it in ultra wide, we'll put it back in wide. And now you can see uh, what's going on with that. So this e Reincubate Camo Studio uh, is incredible. There are options for um, adjustments to focus, options to adjustment for resolution. Uh, if you want to record the audio from your iPhone, you can set up presets, you can transform the image, you can uh, make adjustments to light um, balance and all, all sorts of things. Make adjustments to the image, zoom in, zoom out. It's got everything that you need to make your iPhone your webcam. And let me tell you folks, the webcam or the camera on your iPhone is a fantastic webcam. You will look amazing with it. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about are my, let's see, what are these called? Oh, sure. SE 45s. These are my in-ear monitors. And if you watch iOS today, then this will be familiar to you as I use these on uh, iOS today. And the reason I use these on iOS today is because not only do they have really good sound quality, uh, so they're great for monitoring what I'm saying uh, and how I sound and also what Rosemary's saying and how she sounds, but they're also great for uh, keeping track of, uh, or be, excuse me, they're also great because of the hats uh, that we wear. So we wear hats on iOS today uh, at the end of the show and big old headphones would get in the way. So these sure in-ear monitors are helpful for that. And then I've got comply ear tips on them. These are the best ear tips money can buy. Uh, you can get them in a standard size, but you'll notice that these are a little bit longer, these foam tips. And that is because they go deeper into the ear canal and provide a better seal and uh, hold a little bit better. Eventually I'm going to be upgrading to a pair of in-ear monitors that are custom molded for my ears. But for now, and for many, uh, many a day, many a show, many an episode, I've used these uh, just fine. And you may have seen me wearing them on um, different shows that I'm on. Uh, continuing with the has cables <laughs> um, category, I'll talk about the headphones that I use uh, with most of my podcasting when I'm not uh, needing to put something on my head. And those would be my Sony headphones. These are the Sony WH-1000XM3 headphones. Uh, for a long time, I used the standard pair of Sony headphones that kind of every podcaster uses and seem to be in every studio. But they ended up... Um, they had just fallen apart over years of use, and I wanted to try a uh, nice pair of Sony headphones, so I upgraded to these. Uh, although I do think that I, I'll end up replacing the ear pads on my old Sony headphones and uh, using those again. I really like the long cable that comes with them and uh, the pure sound that seems to come from them. There's a, definitely a reason why folks choose those Sony headphones um, over any others. Uh, now we move to a control center for my smart home or for my smart home and for my, my desk setup. And this is the Elgato, um, this is the Elgato stream deck. And so this stream deck has several different, uh, buttons here that I can press and they all do different things. Uh, this is how I can switch between cameras really easily while I'm recording shows. I can see the current CPU usage. I can turn on and off lights. I can uh, launch apps as I need to. There you can see a live shot of uh, the the one of the cameras that I have set up. And so this is very handy to make sure that I've got things rolling and uh, to switch between those different things. It's one of the best uh, tools I've ever purchased and it's so great for live streaming. And then on the far right here, you'll see the interface that I'm using. I've switched between interfaces a couple of times and the Mix Pre 3 uh, Mark II is a really incredible piece of technology uh, for as small as it is. I would recommend if you're going to go with the sound devices um, interface and you're going to be stationary, go for the stationary model versus this one, which is more portable. Uh, if you are portable, this is the best option that you can choose. But I found that it gets a little uh, picky um, about inputs and serving as an input whenever you are um, stationary most of the time. So when you're using the USB-C connections as the way to uh, to interface with it. it, it gets a little picky. But again, 
incredible for what it can do. The amplifier and it is the amplifiers in it are amazing. It's got three inputs, uh, multiple ways to output from it, and uh, built-in limiters and all sorts of magic. I don't know half of what it can do. Uh, I just use it and love it for what it does do for me. And then over here on the far right, this is my tried and true fast friend. Uh, this is a Rolls um, mic switch. I believe it's the Rolls uh, MS. Uh, 111 mic switch. And what does this do? Well, when I push this button, you didn't hear that because I muted the microphone. So it just cuts off uh, the connection with the microphone. And so that way it is completely muted while I am uh, coughing or, or sneezing or doing whatever it is that I need to do uh, while I'm not connected. So the XLR cable runs from the microphone uh, on one side and then to the uh, Mix Pre 3 on the other side. So Pressing that button breaks that connection and it uh, goes quiet because of that. Uh, there's one more thing I have to mention, and that is my lighting setup. Da -da -da -da. Yes, uh, these are the Elgato Key Light. This is the Key Light and the Key Light Air. These are uh, lights that I, <laughs> that, that, absolutely make my setup. Without these, I think my setup would not look as good as it does. It wouldn't look as uh, clean and professional and uh, well lit as it does. Um, these lights are controllable via an app or an app as well on your Mac, but also on your iPhone. Um, and you can control the brightness and the color temperature to get the perfect setup that you want, the perfect lighting that you want. Uh, they get very bright and they can also uh, dim down pretty far. Uh, and they are are both housed on um, both housed atop a, um, a multi mount from Elgato. So you can see there, there's an Elgato multi mount underneath, and same over there. These are fantastic. Uh, not only do they have options for uh, telescopic uh, options here, where unscrewing this will let me bring it up or bring it down, and there are two there that I can go up and down with, but they clamp to the desk. You can see there, uh, so they can stay pretty well, but you can also get the floor. Um, stand. So if you want to just put it directly on the floor, you can. And then with these ball joints on the end uh, and these bars, you can actually make other adjustments too. So you can get things just how you want them. If you wanted to have a light kind of above something uh, with the camera below, you could do that. And as I said, I have it so that it can bring the webcam a little bit closer to me as I am podcasting. So very handy, these Elgato multi-mounts, uh, highly recommended. They also have... Um, built-in cable management with some clips that run along here. I just recently had to switch out the webcam for a different Logitech C920, so that's why mine's a little messy right now. But if you're wondering if it comes with any uh, wire help, it does. Um, and then I also use some cable ties typically to keep everything uh, where I need it. So yeah, I think that brings us to the end of my setup here. We'll switch back. Um, this has been a tour of the setup that I landed on. I, I don't know if I mentioned, of course, my, uh, my Grogu mug, protect, attack, take naps. I'm gonna have a sip here. Always good to have a cup of something nearby, uh, as you're podcasting. And so I do, uh, have my, my mug there nearby, but this, it took a lot to get to where I wanted it to be. And, you know, there are maybe even some changes that I would still make, some things that uh, would work better, some things that would work worse. But ultimately, I really am happy with with my setup. And, you know, I, like I said, I tried more difficult things. I had um, a... Oh goodness, I can't think of what it's called now. Oh, a Blackmagic uh, ATEM Mini and had things set up via that. And I just returned to uh, what worked for me. And uh, I think one of the things that I always get a question about um, and one of the things that was uh, most important is the final uh, piece that I completely spaced on, but that I have to mention. And that's because people ask me about this all the time. It is uh, the center of, especially with iOS today, uh, what I do, Ecamm Live. Uh, this software lets me show my iPhone screen and iPad screen on screen. It has loads of options for switching between cameras. Uh, it interfaces with my uh, stream deck so that I can control the scenes that are on, L settings for zooming and panning and, and brightness and all sorts of things that are built into this uh, scene selection and everything. So if you are doing any live streaming and you're looking for uh, software for the Mac that works and just 
it works really well. Uh, Ecamm Live <laughs> is sincerely so amazing and uh, serves as the kind of most important piece of what I do. When the pandemic first started, I was a little worried about how I was going to be able to show apps and uh, different you know, different settings and things like that for iOS today. And uh, finding out that Ecamm Live could show my iPhone screen was the first piece of that. And then realizing what else it could do took things to the next level. So yes, folks, that is my desk setup. Uh, and I appreciate you for joining me today to talk about it and see how I have things set up. And I hope you've enjoyed everybody else's uh, as well. And uh, I want to thank you, of course, for tuning in uh, to this episode of Hands on Tech. You can check me out on iOS Today, Smart Tech Today, and Tech News Weekly here on the Twit Network. Until next time, goodbye. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Ant Pruitt, host of Hands on Photography here at Twit TV. And yeah, fighting through the the pandemic and all of the adjustments were quite a challenge for me and some of the other hosts here at Twit, but we were able to get through it and make these adjustments to our home studios. And uh, I, personally, I think it worked out quite nicely. So I want to give you a quick rundown of my home studio. But first, let me give you a warning. It's not going to be as clean or, or, or organized as our other hosts, but hey, it still works for me. I am what I am, and I am a, <laughs> a bit of a sloppy content creator. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we have lighting. Lighting is very, very, very very important when it comes to photography and video. You can use an inexpensive camera and make that inexpensive camera shine if you have adequate lighting for your shot. So I have some LED lights that I use, some LED um, video lights that I use. They are Godox SL60s, I believe is what they are. Not terribly expensive, but they're pretty nice quality of light. And I have them sitting inside of a softbox. Um, actually, this is my main key light that's lighting my face right now. Uh, this is in a 36 inch parabolic softbox. So it's big and round and just, just really gives me soft light onto my face. And I also have a grid on it to try to help cut down on light spill everywhere else in the room because light tends to just bounce around all over the place if you don't really control it with the decent light modifier, which I've spoken about on hands-on photography. Wink, wink. So that's my main key light that um, just lights me up as I'm sitting in front of my camera doing the show. But I also have some other lights here. So let's take a look at these other lights. Over here in the back corner is another light. And I should mention that this is the same type of um, LED light as the uh, Godot XL60. And I use remote controls to turn them both on. So if I want to turn on this one in the back, which is my hair light, I just hit the remote and it fires right up. And again, it has a light modifier on it. It has the barn doors on it, which I've sort of closed down just enough. And I've even turned the brightness down to about 10% because they don't need it to be super bright to be a nice hair light. So I just turn it down to about 10% to give me just enough separation from my background. And it also has a, a grid on there too. Again, just it's all about just giving a kiss of light to the, to the back of my head to separate me from the background. Okay, speaking of background, I have this black sheet of paper here and it's nothing fancy. Uh, this is not black studio photography paper. This is actually black uh, bulletin board paper that I got for about 10 bucks and it's just a roll and I hung it up across uh, a c-stand here and these c-stands are probably one of my best assets in here other than the lights because they are by flashpoint they're not terribly expensive they're about 130 bucks but these are flashpoint c-stands that work much better than having a tripod because you can just really move them around quite easily and you can even stack some other things next to them without um, without things being a little bit you know clumsy and in the way and again back to that light my uh, hair light over here that's on another C stand you can see the little pole um, that the uh, cable is sort of wrapped around right there and in the corner you'll see these orange and black little panels these are acoustic panels 
Uh, the acoustic panels are going to help cut down on echo and reverb here in this studio um, because that's a big problem in any open space. Uh, so I grabbed a couple of these from Sound Assured. They sent these to me several years ago and they work quite nicely. And of course, I got to have my own little decorations in here to my beloved team, the Clemson Tigers, and some more acoustic panels over here. There's more acoustic foam over here on this wall in front of me because my main camera is right there, so I'm, I'm speaking into that direction. So I really want to make sure there's not a lot of slapback and reverb coming back. So I have those acoustic foam panels right there on that main wall. And then right there in the center is my main camera. This is my, my um, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera. Now this thing is, for a lot of the stuff that I do, it is absolute overkill. <laughs> but that camera is daggum magical. I love it. 6K resolution. I hardly use the 6K resolution, but it's beautiful and it works really well with the HDMI connection to plug right into my computer. Um, yeah, you, it, that's probably the best value camera you can get out there, in my opinion. All right, so now back to the rest of the studio. Again, that's that light, the um, main key light with the big round 36 inch parabolic softbox. I love this thing because it just looks so good. And as I said before, it has this grid on it to help cut down on the extra spill. And like my other lights, it is on a C-stand, okay? Because the C-stands, they just flat out work and they're just so easy to work with. And then there's another C-stand next to my tripod and my camera. Uh, that C-stand is what's holding my uh, overhead camera. My overhead camera is right here, and this is the Canon M50. Uh, no, not the Canon M50. This is similar to the Canon M50. This is the M200. I get those mixed up from time to time because when you look at them, they look fairly similar. But this is the M200 that Canon um, showed off at CES a couple years ago. Uh, the big premise on it is because it has clean HDMI out so you could live stream with it fairly easily and not have to worry about all of the displays and things like that on the screen. But it's a pretty awesome device. All right, so that's the cameras. And now let's take a look at the desk. My desk is a mess and it's okay. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I have just a regular um, CyberPower PC keyboard. Uh, there's a couple lenses right over here because why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know why those lenses are on my desk right now, but they're there. My coffee mug because I always like to have some, some coffee at some point in the day. And then I have these little gray cards here. I use these gray cards to help me out with white balance. Uh, prior to shooting. So when I sit down in my chair to face that camera over there and I always hold this this little gray card up to make sure I get my white balance set for Mr. Victor in post. Just makes things a lot easier on me and a lot easier on Mr. Victor because you know he's trying to make me look and sound good for hands-on photography. Okay, so now I'm at the desk. These monitors. That one screen is a 32 inch 4K display. I think it's 32 inches. I can't remember. This screen is a 27 inch uh, 2 HD display. So it's like a, I think it's a 2560 1440p. I believe that's what it is. Uh, it's probably a little large. So I probably could make that one just down to maybe a 22 inch and be okay. But I like it. It is what it is. <laughs> Uh, but I definitely like having larger monitors I, I work in a lot of windows. I don't work in a lot of tabs, but I work in a lot of windows. And I think that having that extra real estate is just more beneficial for me and my workflow. Okay, so on to the desk a little more. Here we have the ATEM Mini. Uh, this is the ATEM Mini Pro actually. And this thing is uh, quite nice. It does a great job of allowing me to do video switching 
sorry for the screen flicker here, but it allows me to do uh, camera switching with my video camera. So you see the little red light there, that's telling me that camera one is active. The green light is for camera two. And if I want to switch to camera two, I just hit this little button and it cuts the camera two. It's pretty cool. And it's quick and easy to use. Next on the desk, we have this little microphone interface. Now at Twit, we use the Heil PR40 microphones. You know, that is our standard there. Here's, here's the Heil PR40. These things sound so daggum good. Um, a lot of people like to talk about this Shure SM7B, which is another great mic. This one right here sounds just as good, in my opinion. And, well, at least for my voice, it sounds <laughs> really good. And that's what matters. But yeah, this is the Heil PR40. And that's connected to my computer through this mic interface. Now this is called the Mix Pre. The Mix Pre 3 Mark II actually. This is by Sound Devices. And this thing is amazing. It allows you to connect any type of XLR microphone to your computer. But what's key about it is it has 32-bit float. So you get a lot of dynamic range when recording your audio. So if you're clipping your audio, a lot of times this thing will allow you to uh, recover that audio and, and, and get out of that clipping sound and, and it still sound pretty good. Or if you're too soft, it allows you to pull it up and not capture a whole lot of the noise when you're pulling it up. Uh, super expensive, it's about 700 bucks for these things, but man, these are, the, these are the tools the pros use and they are really, really, really nice. Plugs in via USB, uh, USB-A or USB-C. I think mine is going USB-C at the moment. XLR input really helps get the job done from an audio recording standpoint. All right, one more thing in addition to that on my desk is this thing called a cough drop. Mr. Mr. Burke at the studio hooked me up with this here because I really, really, really get tired of hitting mute inside of Zoom or inside of Skype or anything like that. Um, I, I was hoping for some type of hardware standpoint to, um, that would really help me out. So if I have to cough or if I just need to mute myself for a second, I just hold that button down and it cuts off the mic. It's so easy and so convenient and when I'm done, just let go. We have these at the studio uh, built into the main set desk. Uh, so when we sit down and, and doing this week in tech or this week in Google or what have you, and, this, and if you're on the panel and you need to cough, you have a cough button right there next to you. It's not a big bulky box like this, but it's built into the desk. So I wanted something like that for here. And Mr. Burke, our awesome studio engineer, just set me up with this one. Works like a champ. All right, um, what else is on my desk? I have some speakers here. These are some Edifier, uh, I think they're 1280T Edifier um, desk speakers. Sound amazing for the price. They're only about $140, but they sound absolutely amazing for monitoring audio or just enjoying some, um, some music or enjoying whatever content you're listening to on your computer. I love these things. And you'll notice there's something right in front of it. Not the coffee mug, but this is my stylus, my Wacom stylus. But right next to that is my Wacom Intuos tablet. I love using these things. I talk about it a lot on hands-on photography. These are great for doing um, touch-ups. Uh, if you're doing retouching for portraits and things like that, highly recommend getting yourself a Wacom tablet if you haven't gotten one already. That's the Wacom Intuos, and I believe you can get those now for under $100, maybe about $70 or so. All right. And um, I do have one more camera up here that I use from time to time. This is my Logitech C920 webcam. And yeah, I know it could be overkill to be using that, that Blackmagic um, Pocket Cinema 6K camera. Well, this is not as much overkill. <laughs> it's a nice camera. I've had that camera for ages, and I just use it from time to time if I don't necessarily have to be doing something from a production standpoint. If I'm just talking to someone back home or a friend back home or what have you, then yeah, that's what I use. I don't necessarily fire up the 6K for 
you know, those online hangouts and chats and things like that. Okay, so now, before we go, I just want to pan around here, show you the rest of my mess. <laughs> Here's some boxes from review units that come in, and I usually just throw them right there on the floor. I throw them over there on the floor with the rest of my junk. Those are some more backdrops, those $10 um, backdrop papers that I showed you. Uh, they, again, you can't really beat that value for what they add to your shop. And then over here, I have my chair. This chair, uh, most of the time it's empty. Right now I have a review unit camera in there and a couple batteries, but most of the time it's empty. And I sit right there if I just wanna give myself a bit of a break, because if you work hard, you need to make sure you're giving yourself ample break time throughout the day to keep yourself charged up and being able to perform at an optimal level. So I like to hang out over there and watch some HBO Max or Hulu or YouTube or what have you on these screens and just, you know, just take a couple minutes. All right. Okay, so that is it for my home studio. When I'm not shooting things in the studio, I will go outside and shoot certain things like B-roll or I'll go downstairs to the living room and I'll set up a light or two down there and put it on a table and shoot some product shots there. But most of the time I'm shooting things in here in my home studio. So that is going to do it. Thank you all again for all of the support during this interesting 16 months or so. And uh, yeah, continue to create and dominate, baby. Very impressive. I really, uh, what, what Anna and Micah have done really has made it possible for them to do the show from home for this whole past year. Okay, now time to come back, guys. Come back. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hands on technology. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. I'm just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching. Hands on tech.